Hello and welcome back to another session of the Market Outlook series with me, Kavita Agrawal, the founder of EXP Invest. Like every single Friday, we are back to discuss Nifty, Bank Nifty at the inter-sector analysis. So let's get started with the three-minute time frames analysis of Nifty. So this is Nifty's chart. And this week, like any other week in the market has, or rather like the last week has been very volatile. Why do I call it volatile? Because this level 21,650 right here, up to the level of 21,850, if you see Nifty has been oscillating multiple times between this level, it's sandwiched between it. Briefly, it went up and retested the level of 22,000, but that didn't last too long. This is a really bad market for swing trading or momentum trading. Lately, in our country, swing trading and momentum trading have become buzzwords and there's a lot of retail attention coming to it. So it's very important to know that swing trading, momentum trading, even though it's very rewarding, it is not suitable for every kind of market or rather every kind of market is not suited to it, which doesn't mean that if the market gets choppy, you should change your strategy. It just means that you need to be patient. You need to be able to exercise your edge. So Nifty right now, like I said, is oscillating strongly between the levels of 21,600 and 2050. Here also when the Nifty was in between it, it was very hard to make profits. Why? Because even though there are positive signals emerging on the charts on the basis of technical analysis and strong stocks, it's either triggering stop losses or it, the movement is getting fizzled out, as a result of which it's becoming really difficult. There are select sectors where there is indeed rally, but the nature of that rally is also very sporadic and very uh, erratic, very difficult to capture. Now, coming back to this three-minute time frame, what is standing out to me on the three-minute time frame is that there is a positive divergence, which basically got forged between yesterday's low and today's low. Now, let's move on to the 15-minute time frame, actually, because the 15-minute time frame, I think, has a lot more insight for us to study. First of all, look at this gray line here. This gray line is the five of the 15-minute time frame, and it is lending good support to the price of Nifty. But at the other, on the other hand, there is also 200 EMA, which is also lending resistance to Nifty. Now, it's very crucial to see whether Nifty breaches below the level of 21,650 next week or above 21,850. Now, even if the Nifty breaks above 21,850, it still has to close above the key resistance level of 22,000 with strong volumes in order to establish a strong uptrend. Now, there are a few things on this chart which are not very favorable in terms of Nifty. For instance, if you see this high which was forged this is lower than this high, which means we've already got our first lower high. Plus, if you see this low is already below this low in nature. So technically, we've already got our first lower high and low. This is a little bit worrying, but then again, like I said, I'd rather keep my analysis very evidence based. Now, if the level of 21,650 breaches, then I believe that the market can go down as low as 21,000 to retest. The, the key level here. And if that breaches, then 20,300, but it will be extrapolating too much. Let's not go there yet. Coming on the 75 minute time frame. Now the 75 minute time frame is also not very positive because as you can see, there is a strong negative divergence developing. So what is my strategy now that I can see there is a strong negative divergence? First of all, on the chart of 15 minute time frame, there was a positive divergence here back in the last week of January, which has indeed taken the index into the positive range shift. What do I mean by positive range shift? If I draw this line here, so this was where the positive range shift last time had exited. And then here again, the positive range shift went on till here and then negative range shift. And then we saw a positive divergence right here. So we saw the range shift and then we again went to the positive range. So we are still in the positive range only. But if Nifty on the 15 minute time frame breaks below the level of 30, then again, it's a bit of a problem. So the key levels that we've discussed are 21,650, 21,850 and 22,000. Going back to the 75 minute time frame, like I said, there is a strong negative divergence developing. However, since the 15 minute time frame is looking slightly positive with bullish range in play, if the Nifty manages to break above this 200 EMA of the 15 minute time frame that we saw posing as resistance, if it breaches here, there is a chance that it might, it just might be able to retest the level of 22,000 before correcting again. Overall, my view is a bit negative on the market for the time being. You can see initial positive, but over the next few weeks or months, it's a little negative. If you ask me in terms of the next year, it is again positive. Here, some correction can come. And why I think so is, let's go to the daily time frame to answer that. So on the daily time frame also, you can see a big negative divergence. Now, this negative divergence, the end is happening at the level of 60. So that's one negative. But then there is also one positive on the daily time frame itself, that this leg of upside that we've seen has happened against strong volumes. That is a good sign that even when the prices went up, the volume participation increased. That's good. Had the volume gone up, like for instance here, you see this increasing volume was only up to this point. 
this last leg of rally hadn't seen much increase in volume and then we took a little bit of a correction this side of the upside has seen volume participation which is positive so see this is the characteristic of choppy market also that there are lots of mixed signals now the market is the broader direction of the market is going to be determined on the basis of a breakout and the two key levels that i told you are very important for deciding the next direction of the market is 21650 if this breaches then i believe we can go down to 21000 with 21350 being another important support level intermittently and if we break out above the level of 22000 then i believe the market can go up and forge a new high with resistance at 22250 my revised target if there is a new bull trend for overall market is 22,000. With that, let's move on to Bank Nifty. But before moving on to Bank Nifty, there is something that I wish to tell you. If you have stock queries for me or if there are questions that you want to ask me, then feel free to ask them by going to this link. All you have to go is search exp-invest.in slash stock request. I am dropping this link in the comments for you right now. So you can go there and you can fill this form to get your stock queries also answered by me. At the end of this session, I'll be opening the form and whoever has filled the form already, we'll go in a chronological manner to answer them. If I'm not able to answer yours during the session, then I will be answering your queries after the session and my team will reach out to you with the responses of those. So be sure to add your name and your WhatsApp number so that my team can reach out to you and give you the response on your stock query. Please mention the stock ticker name and the cost price there. Now let's start with the analysis of Bank Nifty. Bank Nifty, what I can see, this is the 15 minute time frame and... Here again, there's a positive divergence. See, the bank Nifty trend hasn't been as, I would say it's not been as choppy as the Nifty broad market has been. Banks' trends lately have been very clear, which I personally usually don't find banks very comfortable for analysis. Now here, there was a positive divergence. If you remember two weeks back when I did the live session, I said that some positive activity can be expected in banks and we did see that briefly. But then the correction happened very fast. Now on my Telegram channel, just when the banking sector was right at the top, I asked my members to exit banks or maintain strict stop losses on the banking positions. And just after that, within a couple of hours, banking stocks started falling really sharply. So there was indications on the three minute time frame and individual banking charts that some selling pressure might just begin because buying intensity had or buying momentum had started to weaken. Right now on the three minute time frame, what I can see is the negative divergence is already set in. So we can expect a little more correction here. 15 minute time frame also I see some negative range shift already settling in. In fact, the bank stocks have been in a negative range shift since here on the 15 minute time frame, I would say. It's been in a negative range shift and so I don't give a lot of credit to the subside. 46,100 I think is a strong resistance for Bank Nifty. And again, if you see this upside, a lot of volume activity didn't occur here. So I'm expecting more weakness to unfold here. On the 75 minute time frame also a negative divergence has occurred and the negative range shift has already started in Bank Nifty. So from what I am sensing, the Bank Nifty is leading the market right, in terms of weakness especially. And in the Bank Nifty, we've been I've been warning you against maintaining big positions since a long time. And what we're seeing is in the banking stock, except for select stocks in the overall sector, the trend has been weak, especially in the bigger banks. I expect that to continue for a bit longer because this correction has been happening against pretty high volumes. Now, again, I'll emphasize the play in banking sector has to be very stock specific. Overall, the sector does not look very positive to me. With that, now let's move on to the chart analysis. And on the intersector chart analysis, let me quickly see from where we want to start assessing the sectoral performance. 25th January, let's just pick up like a low point and let's start analyzing it. We want to look at it on a 75 minute time frame. And I said 25th. So I'm going to squeeze this in a little bit and see there. This is the point. You see this kink in the charts. This kink is basically where kind of sector rotation happens and this I've been studying this chart for more than a year now and I've seen that it's always a good idea to base the analysis of these charts from the kink point where a lot of sectors fell at the same time. Now, whenever I show this intersector chart, a lot of people have this question, Kavita, how to build this chart. It's very easy. Just create a new layout, add CNX 500, change it to line chart, click on this plus button and add all these indices that you're seeing on my chart to the comparison. And this is what you will get. Here you're seeing that days and all are written. That is because I've added a customized, customized this thing indicator to it. You don't really need it. So this is how you can build it. And then here I can see how the sectors have all performed. By the way, there's a detailed video of how to create this layout on my YouTube channel. So if you want, just go to the YouTube channel and search intersector analysis and you'll get it. What we see since the 25th of January, the PSU bank sector has gone up 20%. So what I want to do is I want to go back to the PSU bank sector and I want to take a quick look. So this is the Nifty PSU bank index. 
Now, if I look at the daily time frame, so the public sector, bank sector is actually looking really strong. Initially, so if I go to the weekly time frame, there was this peak here. So back in December 22, right, there was a fake breakout. And then here again, the banking sector really struggled to break out of it, came back down and continued. So the, the public sector banks, I believe the rally is still strong. Okay. However, I wouldn't recommend that you take any fresh entries because you always want to enter stocks before the rally, not after the rally. So whenever there is a dip, I would say buy the dip, but don't buy into a raging rally because then your risk reward ratio will also not be attractive and your you might have to sit on a lot of unrealized losses before you see any profit. Don't be in that situation. So the PSU bank sector looks really strong. The all public sector, enterprise sectors and PSU bank sector, everything is looking very strong. But again, you have to be very stock specific. The energy sector also been performing really great. For a moment, I had thought that the CNX energy was beginning to top out. The reason was that this negative divergence has been building up on the 15 minute time frame for a while and also on the 75 minute time frame. But the energy sector is not listening to anything or anyone. It just keeps rallying left, right and center. Let's go to the weekly time frame. And what I see is... Okay, the trend lines are already there and wow, fabulous rally here and it's only getting stronger. So again, energy sector is also a very good sector to buy on dip. Even though there was this negative divergence, it didn't listen anything. It just gave a bit of a consolidation and started to rally again. So energy sector is very attractive. A temporary dip can happen. So stocks like say BPCL, very strong rally unfolding, but now is not a good time to buy because the volume has started to wane. So what you want to do is, for instance, I have an alert set at the level of 45 on the 75 minute time frames, 25 period RSI. Why? Because on the 15 minute time frame, there's some indication of momentum exhaustion. And also because the stock has rallied so much, it has a tendency of coming back to the 500 EMA to test. So in the energy sector, I will wait for the 500 EMA to get retested on a 15 minute time frame before I make a fresh position. That's what you can do as well. Going back to our intersector chart, what I see is a very good rally there. Let's also look at the CNX FMCG sector and uh, FMCG and see if there is any positive signals developing here. So FMCG is trying to create a bit of a bottom, but um, it is very good time to buy stocks in the FMCG sector for the long term, but not for immediate short term trading, because it looks like even though it is between the 200 and the 100 EMA on the daily time frame and the RSI is also looking very, very bullish. Again, 75 minute time frame is also come down to 30. Actually, what I believe is in the short term, there might be a little bit of correction, but accumulative positions can be made in select stocks in the FMCG sector because see the immediate, the very small time frame is still negative, but the larger time frames, they are beginning to cluster around the level of 30 on the RSI. If you see here, when the FMCG sector was in a bear trend, sorry, was in like a major correction, you see this folds kind of start coming near the level of 30. This is the time when you know that it's good time to start accumulating positions for the like three to six months or even 12 months period at least. Like even for the long term, even if you want to look for a five years position, the best time to do it is, is when the RSI is starting to show that the bearish momentum is uh, going up. And it's only good to do that in stocks where fundamentals are really strong, not where fundamentals or corporate governance is an issue. So going back, metal sector, I think is looking really strong for a short term rally. So I think we can look at that for short term opportunities. Let's take a quick look at the CNX metal sector. Like I said, there has been really strong rally here and we've seen a dip and the metal sector has already given a breakout and come back to retest. So I think this is now a very good time to make fresh entries because I think the metal sector is going to start a very fresh leg of rally and come above and out of this resistance trend line. So if I take you to the weekly time frame, you'll see that the metal sector is standing very close to a major breakout point and once the breakout happens a very strong rally can unfold again in the metal sector let's take a look at let's take a look at some stocks so for example if we take a look at say tata steel see tata steel and cnx metal sector chart is so similar in nature here again the previous peak has been breached a pullback has come and the volume is picking up really strongly so in the metal sector there's a lot of opportunity for fresh entries and some good position building so that might be something you want to check out Again, pharma sector and healthcare sector, see the overall market, like I said, on a stock specific basis, sector specific basis, if I see there's a lot of positive signals coming in. It's just Nifty and Bank Nifty, which are looking slightly indecisive. So Nifty is acting really choppy. And then there is the daily time frames, a little bit of negative divergence there. But the thing is that this, how this negative divergence is going to play out, I don't know. 
because there's mixed signals coming in from the divergence and the volume activity. So I am keeping, I'm trying to stay as objective as, as possible by keeping a little bit of cash for the timing. If I'm seeing good opportunities near 21,650, I'm uh, getting in and when the market is going above like to 21,850 or 22,000 I'm keeping my stop losses really tight at those times so that if the market reverses my profits get booked so as a swing trader in stocks like PFC so I've been swing trading in PFC quite a bit and what happens is if you look at the 15 minute or the 75 minute time frame so whenever PFC comes near the level of 40 on the RSI I end I ride it for as long as my stop loss doesn't get triggered and I revise my stop losses very tightly so today instead for instance my stop loss got triggered in the morning and then i got an alert that uh, pfc has come back to the level of 40. now i know on the daily and the uh, weekly time frame that the volume activity and the momentum activity is really strong so when my alert got triggered i bought back into the stock so it's not usual that i sell and buy stocks within the same day but if my trade setup tells me to i do it so that is what i had to share with you now let's move on to your stock query so i am going to pull out the stock request sheet and we'll see who are the fastest fingers who have submitted their stock queries for us. The reason why I, ha I have introduced this form system is because naturally during the live session, it is not possible to answer everybody. And lately, few people have been getting a little annoyed with me that we ask queries, but you don't respond to them because obviously there's a time constraint here. And so I have to sometimes leave some queries unanswered. So that is the reason. So we have requests from 20 people. So I'm going to share my screen again. So this is the stock query form. Like I said, you need to go to the website. And if you don't remember the website, don't worry about it. Any time you can just go to my YouTube channel and the website is right there on my banner. You can see it and you can open the form and you can fill in your queries. So let's go to the responses and let's view it in sheet. So last day I've already answered to few people. I haven't reverted back or reached them, reached out to them on uh, WhatsApp yet, but I will be doing that very soon. So let's take a look at the queries which have been uh, posted next. We have Satveer and he is asking for the query on Satveer ji is asking for the analysis of Pidilite. Should hold it or exit for short term. Pidilite is actually one of the stocks where I'm very bullish on. Let's open the charts again. You asked on the 6th, so Pidilite has already gone up. Now, what I would say is that because here the momentum that is unfolding is really strong, you should continue to hold on to your position and maintain a stop loss at the level of 2600 right now. And on the upside, if you see on the daily time frame, the upside that is unfolding is looking really strong. On the upside, your minimum target on uh, Pedalite should be around 2790. Let's quickly make an entry. 2600 is your stop loss and 2790 is your target. And uh, the price of Pedalite is right now 2658. Let's take a look at LNT for Mr. Dipesh. He's asked at 2900 cost. 2900. LNT is giving a little bit of a dip right now, but I am quite bullish on LNT to be honest. And I think now is a very good time. It makes a really good buy on dips candidate. There is a small positive divergence that has come up on the 15 minute, the 3 minute and the 75 minute time frame. And this is a very rare moment, which I like to call eclipsing, where you see positive divergence on three time frames. And these usually show the strongest results. So I think LNT is looking very attractive. I'm going to set a vertical line here and I'm going to set an alert on it. So what happens is next day the market opens, I get an alert that I need to look at the LNT chart. So LNT definitely keep holding. See this little bit of correction also that happened right from the top. It's around I think a 12% correction was already indicated by this negative divergence on the 75 minute time frame. That is why I like to do momentum analysis so much because it's really helpful in swing trading. Your stop loss on LNT. Sorry. So looking at this chart, this gap here, this gap basically should not get filled up because I think it's a breakaway gap and breakaway gaps are not supposed to get filled up. But we'll still give the uh, stock a little bit of breathing space. So see, even if it's LNT, right, it's not worth risking your capital for. So you should maintain your stop loss. So 3176 should be your stop loss for LNT. And uh, the current market price is 3335. Your target in LNT will be a very aggressive target if I have to give you is around 4600. But if I look at the daily time frame and it does look like LNT has just come break up, given a breakout above this very important trend line and I think it can continue its rally and I think 4600 looks like a pretty reasonable target for LNT. The next request submitted is by Mr. Saurav. He's asking for the analysis of broad for short swing 1 to 2 months and holding 159. This is not a very good purchase unfortunately Saurav because this stock is showing negative divergence and you have clearly bought the stock after the rally it's consistently but even then this is positive that these three strong candles have unfolded against pretty good volumes and here like a proper reversal has also occurred 
which is good and the broad trend is very good the stock is also by the way in a bull range which i i like doing swing trading in stocks which are at the bull range your entry has been slightly unhealthy because clearly you didn't look at the more intraday -ish, like the 75 or the 15 minute time frames that's why you went out slightly at the top but because you've selected a good stock with strong momentum you'll be fine but don't repeat this practice so you don't want to tempt luck by constantly so you bought at 59 a more ideal level should have been below the level of 145 even this dip would have been a good place to buy now because a positive divergence has occurred but then again i don't want to suffocate the stock because the market is quite volatile but i also don't want to tell you a very big stop loss so and plus there is this 500 ema which has been tested once but nothing is stopping the stock from retesting it again i think what you should do is if you had bought the stock this correction see this is the rally which i wanted to capture if i draw fibonacci on this one this correction is exactly 61.8 percent of this now that correction has occurred and the stock has given a bounce back see that's the thing again it can again come and retest this level the reason why i'm feeling uncomfortable right now is that if i tell you to maintain this as a stop loss it's huge it's massive there is huge resistance level which also means that if the stock breaks out from here with high volumes actually which looks pretty likely given the the rally up to this point has been pretty strong this has been absolutely nonsense this again has been good so it looks like the stock is prepping for a major double top breakout so you have to maintain the stop loss at 132 i can't give you a smaller stop loss on this but it's a little risky to keep a very small holding period and what i would say is that once the stock starts moving up so if the stock if and when the stock gives a breakout above the level of 171 172 you need to revise your stop loss to 147 now if i have to give you a target for that i'm gonna have to draw the trend lines on this this trend line method is called the cloning trend line method where you draw one maiden trend line and you clone it to the other peaks and bottoms by the way all these technical analysis jargons and analysis and observations that i'm making if you want to learn that you can join my advanced anyone can join my advanced technical analysis training sessions the best way to get more information about those training sessions or my trade together program where i give you swing recommendations is by joining my telegram channel i'm dropping the link of my telegram channel in the comments once again so if this level breaks out it looks like there is not much so it's like a fast okay guys if this is a fast moving zone of the stock every time the stock has been between this and this trend line it's seen like really strong movements i would i don't think see also what i'm looking at is a super trender stock so wellspun has a tendency to give like massive rallies when it starts to trend so you want to hold on to the stock for a little bit longer and on the upside it looks like the stock has a target of around 300 and the spot price of the stock is 157.5 now let's take a look at Bodha for Dharini. I want to know about swing trading, but I have a Bodha. She bought it at 16.4. Yeah, this is absolutely hopeless. Let's take a look at IOC next for... See, there's never anything good to be gained from buying stocks like penny stocks like Bodha. Don't go for that. Trade in liquid stocks with good corporate governance, good fundamentals. You'll be better off for it. Now for Ashish, what should be the ideal target? The kind of momentum and the volume that is unfolding on IOC, I believe the ideal target is around 280 for stock IOC. 280 is the target. Uh, Naveen Pluro, 4,220. 4,220 is where Naveen Pluro has been bought by Mr. Anil. Stock is trading at 3,000. Recovery possible, I can hold. Anilji, Ang ban karke hold kariye stock ko. It's a very good stock. And it's also a super trender, which means if you look at this, the way the stock moves, it just rallies like an elephant. Again, rallies like an elephant. So, now it's a rest, le rahe, but my expectation is that it's going to rally again very soon and it's going to rally a lot. Right? So, keep holding on. In fact, I am accumulating this stock in my long-term portfolios and soon I'll also be recommending it to my long-term plan. Geo Finance. Geo Finance, few days back also someone had asked, had asked and I said that I'm very bullish on it. And you can see that the stock is uh, breaking out pretty well with very strong volume. So it's very hard to give a technical target on geofinance right now. But I would recommend that you keep holding on to it if the future is really bright. Also, right now, the stock has taken a bit of dip, taken support at the 50 EMA of the 75 minute time frame and started to go up. So it's a little bit late, but still a good time. Let's take a look at RR Kabil for Utkarsh Singh. RR Kabil's 75 minute time frame is looking super duper, ex super duper attractive so is the 15 minute time frame clearly positive range shift has occurred here so first i want to set an alert on the vertical line 
नाउ डेली टाइम फ्रेम अगर देखिए राइट तो सी द स्टॉक हैज अ टेंडेंसी ऑफ गिविंग गुड बुल ट्रेंड्स सो व्हाट आई एम सीइंग हियर इज a little bit of correction has occurred so it is looking attractive on the 75 minute time frame right but then it's very hard to say whether it's going to last a lot longer because there's not much data to look back to so that's why the forward projection also gets a little bit limited but i'll get back to you on rr kabil for some reason only the rr kabil chart is not loading let's take a look at hdfc bank for ajay so hdfc bank though i've been very weak on i i've been telling you guys not to invest in hdfc bank since it took resistance right here at 1700 and now it's actually come very close to my support level which i had told you which is basically this green zone which is 1363 and what i see is the daily time frame this is an important trend line to which hdfc is headed the has come down to the level of 30 the volume has started to subside on the decline which is good because the first part of the decline happened against very strong volumes which was a tell that this downside is here to stay now on the 75 minute time frame what i see is a positive divergence has developed so daily pay volume is weakening on the downside 75 pay positive divergence and 15 pay bhi positive divergence plus positive range shift so i think hdfc it's good time to start accumulating position again use the next 3 to 5% downside to accumulate your position having said that you still need to maintain a stop loss at the level of 1357 because if this stop loss gets breached then the next support is another 5% low so you don't want to experience that bit of downside if you can even save that 3-4% hit on your capital you should strive to do that now let's take a quick look at the live comments and i want to respond to comments which have something to do with analysis methodologies or a technical question all stock queries will be responded to on the basis of what i have already shared with you all the stock queries will be responded to on the basis of this website so if you have stock queries for me please visit this website and submit your stock query and my team will reach out to you with my analysis response please and minute trade liye kaise rahega so satish ji you are asking about an options dekhiye don't do options trading it's very risky it's not worth the risk and honestly a retail trader does not have the systems or the bandwidth to take the kind of risk and participate execute the kind of efficiency that you need for succeeding in swing trade uh, in options trading on the other hand swing trading is a landscape where with your limited time and limited resources you can you have a probability of winning there options may you do not see this is the reason why options trader even if they have a winning streak they are not able to hold on to the winnings because it, they just get sucked back into the very high frequency very emotionally demanding game of options trading i know options trading looks like a shortcut to riches but it's a shortcut to poverty please don't do options trading so why is sbi bank and bank of baroda moving up like i said all public sector enterprises have been really attractive because of what is being portrayed on the macro economic level that is the reason why we can expect more bullishness to come there samir agarwal kindly fill up the stock request form the address is on your website on your screen ashwini even if you want uh, my analysis on stocks to make fresh entry kindly fill up the form and let me and my team get back to you with a request girish ji has two questions ma'am what can we expect on monday see girish ji i expect on monday and tuesday a little bit of positive activity because we've just taken support at 21650 level so that support should hold but if 21650 gets breached then it's going to go down what you need to understand is the analysis i'm sharing with you while it is objective based it is not failure proof it can get invalidated if a certain support or resistance gets breached also this is not for you to go and make an action on because if you want executable or actionable advice you need to connect with me one on one be sure yes you can accumulate psu banks but you have to wait for a dip it's never a good idea to accumulate stocks when they are already hot ramishwar ji so we have deva who's bought wpil at the peak holding hope of history daily candle stake support at 15200 ema deva i'll give you an example hope is not for trading hope is an emotion emotion has no role in trading so if you find yourself hoping for some outcome you are not doing justice to your capital it's better to exit such a stock i know it will be painful but that pain will start to heal the moment you realize it if you don't realize the pain it is going to keep hurting you please rip the bandaid off and exit the stock where you are hopeful because you don't have an objective view or you can reach out to me for portfolio clean up i'll be more than happy to go through your portfolio help you with respect to allocation advice stock advice i'll tell you for each stock in your portfolio whether you should hold exit or add more and if it's a loss whether you should average partially exit or fully exit i will also comment on the allocation now i have seen a lot of retail traders don't realize that for every stock that you purchase in the portfolio you need to firstly have a proper entry exit strategy and you need to give the stock enough power in terms of capital allocation to have a real impact on your overall portfolio 
you need to have your eyes on your long term goal in terms of investing and only then will you succeed in the market otherwise the stock market is a jungle it's very easy to get lost and you will not even know that you are lost so saurabh agrawal is asking how to set 75 minute time frame in trading view so let me show him that very quickly so you see the name of the stock you see this plus button through which by the way you can add any stock for comparison on any stock index whatsoever beside that is this d button which basically says time frame so you need to first set the custom minutes so for example if i want to set a custom time frame i'll go down i'll write 75 and i will hit enter okay so when i click add it gets added to my list now from the list i can select 75 minute time frame right on the other hand you can also press comma this will open the change interval window for you and you can set 75 minute time frame but if you're somebody who is aspiring to do analysis for yourself i would suggest instead of using one window for all time frames use different windows for different time frames you can open different windows in your trading view layout using this button this is the select layout button so whichever how many ever time frames you want to study you select that and you set up your time frames now i by the way i use a premium version of trading view that's why i have access to so many features it is i would also recommend you to get take a premium version of it because if you're pursuing this as a side business then it's good to make some initial investments so that you are efficient so even my members of the advanced technical analysis training program i tell everybody that make the small investment so that you don't have to experience losses you need to set yourself up for success if you want to be successful in the market the market is not going to give you success anyway so let's look at the last comment how to learn technical analysis any good book recommendations i have a very good recommendation of book and i will tell you which one so this is my advanced technical analysis training program and in this i always share this book repeatedly this is the technical analysis complete let me show you the complete resource for financial market technicians and this book is written by kirk patrick, patrick and dalquist and i love this book i have personally read this book over and over again i've read this book like six times and i still keep going back to this books to touch up on my basics whenever i want some inspiration so i'm going to share this book best book for technical analysis in my telegram channel so if you want this book you can head over to my telegram channel and download it so with that we've come to the end of this live session thank you so much for giving me your time and energy and your attention thank you for being a great audience asking so many questions if you like the knowledge that i shared before leaving please give a thumbs up to this live stream and don't forget to leave your comment it makes my day to read your after session comments just a reminder again if you want me to answer your stock queries fill in the form i have shared the link in the chat already i will see you on monday at 5 pm in the retail traders special series until then namaste